in this episode of Paranormal Places. Tombstone things over there were where we saw the first dog. There's an old saying that seeing is believing. But what if you don't believe your eyes? My name is David Flowers. After years of paranormal experiences, I've decided I needed to capture proof. So I gathered some gear and went off to find my own evidence. Come with me as I investigate paranormal places. Greetings and welcome to Paranormal Places. I am David Flowers, your host. This is Sidekick Charlie. I have with me this evening. He really wanted to be in the show this night tonight, so uh, he doesn't take no for an answer. Um, tonight's story is called Carl and the Ghost Dogs, plural, too. Um, this story goes back into my mid twenties, and I'm in my mid forties now, so it's. 20 plus years. I was living in Austin, Texas, and I had a friend named Megan, and her roommate was named Mai. And Mai was from Norway, and she was really into the occult, uh, it, but it was a little different in European countries. They, ha they didn't have a lot of the things that we did. It was just a little different. And when she got here, she was fascinated by Ouija boards. And she was asking us all about them. And like, well, it's a way to talk to the dead. Deviation kind of thing. But she wanted to take a Ouija board to a graveyard um, on a full moon and find a 13-year-old boy to contact. She was very specific. This is what she wanted to do. So, of course, being us, we were willing to go with her. And uh, so Megan and I and her roommate, Mai, and my friend Jay went all together. We went to Oakwood Cemetery in Austin. I wasn't familiar with the cemetery. They lived in the area. So they just kind of took me with them. Um, we parked our car next to the fence along the back side. It was the smallest fence that we could jump the cemetery fence into at nighttime and so we went into the cemetery um, with intentions of finding a 13 year old boy this was my was very specific big full moon at night it's very creepy you can imagine um, the first part of the cemetery we went through we looked, we looked all over could not find a 13 year old boy um, but we got into this older part of the cemetery where it just seemed like things were too perfect. Perfectly creepy, that is. Uh, the big full moon was just epic. Epic. Looking at, beaming down with the shadows of these old oak trees. And like magic, there was Carl. 13 year old boy tombstone this is it so we all sat down and put our hands on the Ouija board and um, after a while I realized that it was not working and I was complaining about people trying to move it they were complaining that I was trying to move it it just was not working it's not and Mai got frustrated, and she and she was like, "Oh, Ouija boards don't work. This whole thing has been bogus." So, um, she jumped up, 
and her and and Megan jumped up too and they started walking towards the gate and the gate was the only way out once we jumped into the cemetery from the back fence the fences were too tall to climb back out we had to go out the gate it's the only way out um, it had crossbars that you could put your feet up and like climb up over the gate so when Megan and I stood up and walked towards the gate Jay and I stayed seated and we were just kind of talking kind of chatting about how crazy this whole evening has been uh Jay stood up he was standing up I went to stand up and you know when there's wind blowing and you're moving your head around and maybe the wind is blowing right into your ear and you can't hear things very well I was standing up and the wind was blowing and I couldn't hear and I but I swear I heard a dog growling and it was vicious. It was that kind of growl where you're like, I'm in danger. There's this animal that is about to attack me. And I, and, but, but I couldn't hear it very well. And so I stood completely up and I looked over at Jay and I was about to say, Jay, did you hear that? Uh, but Jay had this look on his face that kind of answered my question before I asked it. And he had, his eyes were big like saucers. And he was looking off into the distance and, and I said, Jay, did, and, and I realized that he was already looking at something. And so I turned around and there was this dog, huge dog, like Great Dane size. But he wasn't in the stance that you would expect a growling, snarling dog would be. He was standing proud. He was standing up straight and like his chest and his shoulders were out and I remember I remember seeing the, the side of his neck and the side of his shoulders and how smooth they looked uh, like very short haired dog white white almost glowing white and and the moon was in such a way that it would have shined on him if he was white he would have glowed you know and that's what he looked like glowing dog and he was just sitting there didn't look like he was upset at all. He was just sitting. And Jay picks up a rock and is about to throw it at, at this dog. And then I really realized he does see the dog. We were not talking about it. It happened all too fast. But he had this rock and he threw it. And like a basketball player that just shot the perfect shot you were watching it and it looked perfect it, the rock was going right towards this dog and right as the rock got close to where the dog was it broke this like three-dimensional barrier and went in between the what was the dog and a tombstone and a bush and then you could see that it wasn't a dog at all it was a tombstone and the shadows of a bush but how could we have both seen what looked like a dog? So much that not talking to each other about it, Jay picks up a rock and throws it at it. So the dog is gone. That What we thought that dog was vanished. And I look over and I see another dog. And this dog is running at full speed. And it's not the same dog. It's a smaller dog. And it had, it had like a black and white patches on it. And it is running as fast as a dog can possibly run. I don't know if you've ever seen the Greyhound dogs when on the racetrack. It was running as fast as possible down the road. So I see Megan and she's got one foot on the gate and one foot on the ground. And I scream, Megan! And she picks that last foot up. And she's completely on the gate now. And she looks over at me and she says, what? And the dog never slows down. That dog never stops running. That dog never 
slows down at all and just vanishes, runs full on, full speed at the gate and runs through it and never comes out the other side. Gone. At the exact same time, Megan lifts that last, that last foot up off the ground, vanishes. And so at that point, I look at Jay. And he still big old saucers in his eyes. He doesn't understand. And same with me. I'm like, well, did you see that? Did you see that? What just happened? Did you see the dogs? What about the one you threw the rock at? And Jay is not saying a word. Jay is like, let's just go. And he's walking towards the gate. So now the girls have climbed the gate and they're on the other side by the time Jay and I reach the actual gate and we both climb over and uh, Megan meets me and she said, what did you want? Why did you call my name? What's going on? And she could tell by our facial expressions like, something is happening and she's like what's going on and the only thing I could ask to try and like rationalize what's happening she has a dog Megan has a dog and so I asked her did you bring your dog and she says no you were with us we drove in the car together we didn't bring Ursa is the name of her dog we didn't bring my dog what's going on and so I explained to her that we had seen the dogs and um and Jay, who is still not saying anything, I'm like, Jay, back me up. And he's not talking, not saying anything at all. So we get in the car and we leave. By the time we get back home, we park the car. Jay hops out of the car and just leaves. He doesn't want to talk to anybody. And I understand that. That's that's a terrifying situation. That's weird. That's, that's some weird stuff. Um... I haven't been able to find any of the people in the story. I haven't been able to find Megan, who is a really good friend of mine, um, or my. Um, I'm sure they've all been married and families and changed their names and can't find them at all. Jason, Jason didn't talk to any of us after that night. I don't know if we ever talked to Jason. I didn't talk to him. <laughs> he did not hang out with us after that. Um, Maybe this story will bring some of my old friends back. Maybe they'll see this and be like, oh yeah, I was with Carl and the ghost dogs. That was me. Maybe they'll come back and uh, kind of validate, maybe bring some more information into this whole thing. Um, so I decided I needed to go back to the cemetery. I wasn't exactly sure if my memory, I wasn't exactly sure if I remembered everything correctly. You know, it's kind of one of those things where it happened so fast and it was so bizarre that you think, maybe I imagined it. Maybe I didn't see it, uh, uh, how it actually happened. Maybe I can't believe my own eyes. So I went back to the cemetery and the, everything was exactly how I remember it. I got into a position where I can see the gate. I got into a position where I can see the road where the second ghost dog came running down. I got into a position where I can see what I thought was the tombstones or a mausoleum and some bushes that could have been the first dog. And right there was Carl. It was exactly how I remember it. So with that kind of memory and all those elements being exactly how I remember them, I can only imagine that the dogs were there too, that I did not imagine them. They were real ghost dogs. That really happened. And that's powerful to me. Like that was a memory that shook me for a long time so much that I started to doubt my own memory and doubt my own perception of things 
but going back, going back to the funeral, going back to that graveyard and seeing and finding Carl, it was powerful to me. So here it is, Carl and the Ghost Dogs. After 20 years, I had to look up how to find the cemetery, and in my research, I found out a lot about the cemetery's history. No one knows exactly, but records seem to indicate that the first people that were buried here were victims of a Comanche Indian raid. After the Comanche Indians were killed or cleared off the land, the dead European victims were buried basically where they died. Later, archaeologists found out that this was an Indian burial ground. So the first people buried in the cemetery were Europeans buried alongside the ancestors of the Comanche that were so brutally murdered in order to claim the land. Later thousands were buried here during the Spanish flu influenza. An older part of the cemetery was a pauper's grave where people were buried unmarked. From about the turn of the century to the 1930s, the cemetery had a big problem with grave robbers. It was nicknamed Grave Robber's Heaven. I also discovered that the cemetery already has a very extensive ghost history with dozens of local legends and a walking ghost tour. As I pull in and park, I'm right next to Carl's grave and don't even know it. So this is it. This is as close to as I can tell is where this happened. Um, that is the gate that Megan and Mai climbed over. The second ghost dog came from over there. I don't think we were any further away from the gate. Maybe we were over here. It seemed like we were under a tree, and it just looked too perfect. We got over the side. There's the back fence over there. We hopped over that fence, got in here, and walked not very far. There's the gate still over there. Maybe I can still see the gate. The dog ran. my right. I don't know if I'll actually find the exact place because this seems like it's too far away. We wouldn't have let them walk that far. See these old trees? This seems like this seems like the place would be more over here. But these older trees. But now I think we're too far away from the gate to see it. Yeah, this is too far from the gate. Alright, well I think what we probably did the sat underneath a tree that is no longer here. Probably walked down this road and then heard another dog. Looked up over there, saw that dog, and saw the dog running down this road full speed. Now, the, the only difference here is now you can't see. the fence. You can't see the gate. Here you can see the gate, but these trees could have grown up. There's the gate.
Let me not look back over here where we first were, where I first thought it felt more like it could have been. Here's the gate. Yeah, that's perfect. In this area. Carl, 1874 to 186 to 86. Maybe 13, which would have been exactly what she was looking for. To the left, those mausoleum, big tombstone things over there were where we saw the first dog, or maybe over there by Gracie. Then this this road right here is the road that the other dog ran down. Those gates right there were where Megan and I were climbing over. This road was dirt at the time. And I don't think any of these other trees were in the way. That is perfect. Carl. Mausoleum. The road. And the gate. Hey, do you remember that story about the ghost dogs I used to tell you? Yes. Yeah, I, I went back to the cemetery and I found the tombstone of that 13-year-old boy. Uh, his name was Carl. Yeah, and um, I think we need to go back and explore at night. Yeah, we do. We should do that. We should do that. Definitely hearing voices. Oh, I'm getting chills. Hello, are you here? Hi. <laughs> Who was that? Sound like you said Deva. It's my name. <laughs>